Welcome to your video by DJ SPRC. I want to answer, because I get this question answered, well not answered, asked a lot. Uh, when I'm building a set of shocks, or one of my shocks, let's say in one of my machines, uh, let's take an example, my crate in uh, 6S here. Let's say one of my O-rings uh, decided to let go and the shock's empty. What's the best oil to refill it? Uh, the question I get, that's a question I get asked a lot. And I just wanted to go through this. I did one of my older videos uh, talk about shock oils. I do have a little bit of variation here. The highest I have right now on the table is 70. Uh, this is from Team Associated. And basically what you want, you don't want to put a too thicker oil in a shock. Now, you can and you cannot. Let's say you have a very small shock. Let's take example here that I have for uh, one of my Timias, future build to come. If you look at the body here, the body is roughly about a one inch. They're a fairly small shock. Now, this kind of shock, you don't want to go too light because the reason is it's a small shock you want to be able to have that compression if you take an example i don't have it around me right now but the attraxis uh, 116 e revo the shock's even smaller than this guy here normally i would suggest 90 weight to 100 weight because of the compression that the oil will create Basically, the thicker the oil, the higher the number, should I say, the thicker is the oil. Now, if you look at the 60 weight, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it very much. The camera doesn't want to catch it. But again, it's basically like sliding molasses. Or if you're in Canadian land, a little bit like maple syrup. When you just got it out of the uh, the fridge and you're trying to pour it, it's very thick. Um, that's what you want in a smaller shock. But now like in the crate in here, that's a big shock. You don't want to basically have too thick oil in it because when the machine will bounce, it won't absorb it. Because yes, you do have your spring that absorbs the, the bounce for your terrain and your oil is a dampener, something like that. You want both of them together to work. Um, that's why a lot of times I see people bringing me their machines to take a look at it, things like that. And especially on tracks of slashes, on their shock themselves, they have the multiple spacers. Because the stock shocks on, the, on a slash is spacers you insert to give your, uh, put more uh, rigidity in your shock. And basically the machine sits like a, a four by, a, like an old uh, drag car. The front end's here and the, the back end's uh, jacked up. That creates you two issues. One is your drive shafts, right here, they are on an angle. Now you're creating more friction and creating some drag on yourself. The physical machine of a slash, a short course, should I say, is you'll see your back end will always be lower. That's the nature of the vehicle. If you look at short course racing, real short course racing, you always notice when they're going, they're like front ends like in the air. Old style gassers in the time. If you look at gassers on a drag strip, Front end's like 10 feet in the air and the back end's on the ground. Basically giving you more traction. On a bigger vehicle like this here, I would go maximum like 60 weight and stretching it, 70. That would be the max on these guys here I would go. Now, let's say you don't have a basher, uh, you don't have a short course. Let's say you have a crawler. 
Like the Desert, li Desert Lizard shocks here from Yeah Racing, they're internal spring. And what's fun about these, they're dual spring. Uh, you have one on the bottom and one on top. Basically, when your shock comes out completely, there's a spring to help it come back in. And you do fill these guys with oil. The only difference, you don't see the spring, like I said, they're internal. Now, on this kind of, uh, of system, or how can I say this exactly, type of vehicle you'd be using it on, normally I would go like 35, uh, even 35, 30, even to even certain point, 20. Reason is, you want that shock to be able to travel extremely well. And when you're going over rocks, you want to be able to sometimes keep that angle. And let's say you're going a side of a hill and your vehicle is completely on its side and your shock suddenly wants to decompress because the oil is compressed, it might throw your vehicle off and fall. That's one of the reasons I go with uh, like a 20, 30, 35. Now, if you're having like a race vehicle, you're doing competition, things like that. Now that's a little bit trickier because you want to be able to make the vehicle work a little bit better, be able to get certain traction. Uh, my short course that I have, it's a SCTE. I didn't have, I should have brought it. Uh, on that vehicle right now, I have, if I remember correctly, it is 42 and a half in the rear. And I think I have like 47, or no, sorry, 42 and a half in the front and 37 in the rear. Now, some people will turn around, why lighter in the rear, higher in the front? When, I'm, when the vehicle's jumping off uh, one of the bounce or a triple, you want the front end, half the time the front end will land first before your rear. You want to be able to absorb that, that bounce. Then you have your back end sitting and you're just off. Uh, one, even one of my buggies is the same way too. The other thing too I do say, if you're not sure how your vehicle goes, you have worst case scenario, you get yourself a couple of these bottles and just try the vehicle out the way you want it. And basically, you'll see if you like the way your vehicle runs. Uh, in the beginning, before I knew any of this knowledge, let's say, I put whatever I thought in it and I always said, damn, my vehicle is not riding right. Something's wrong. I'm not getting traction here, not tr getting traction there, things like that. Uh, and since I am put a little bit more thought into it, my vehicles run a lot better, a lot smoother, and less time I'm on my side, especially with, uh, with my crawlers. Uh, with my bashers, I just bash them. But still, when it comes time to swap my oils out of these guys here, the bigger guys I have, like I said, 50, 60, 70, it's rarely that I use it depending on the, uh, of the physical machine. But my two go guys on bashers are 60 and 50. Now, if you guys have any questions or comments, post them below. I'll be glad to answer you guys. And don't forget, if you do like this video, hit the thumbs up. It does help the channel. And don't forget to subscribe. That even helps better. And I do thank you a lot for subscribing. Thank you for watching.